In this video, we're actually going to use the Magma Chamber Simulator to do the FC-only run we prepared in our previous tutorial. If you haven't yet prepared an MES input file, please go to our prior tutorial on how to prepare an input file for the Magma Chamber Simulator. Now, in order to run the MCS, we need to have two things open, Excel and the terminal window. I like to keep my terminal window locked in my desktop bar, so I can just click on it and open it up. Now, because we're doing an FC only run, we are only going to be dealing with the Magma subsystem, so we only need to have one of these windows open. Next, we're going to open up the Magma Chamber Simulator. We did this before in the install video, but if you don't remember, we need to navigate to our Documents folder using the Finder window. Once in our Documents folder, we want to open the MCS folder, and then the folder labeled MCS VBL Code. The Magma Chamber Simulator is the Excel file MCS underscore phase EQ underscore 2019 C, uh, at least in this case. If you haven't noticed yet, the file name for the MCS has already changed since we made our first install tutorial. Uh, this is because we want you to have the best Magma Chamber Simulator possible. So let's open up the MCS. And there's a pop-up window that asks if we want to disable macros. We do not. We want to enable macros, so click Enable Macros. The next pop-up window tells us which version of the Magma Chamber Simulator and which version of Excel that we're running. Click OK. And then the final pop-up window instructs us to navigate to the MCS folder. Uh, again, this whole bit has to do with security permissions between the Mac OS and Excel. And although it can be a bit tedious, it's actually a good thing. So we want to navigate until MCS is at the top and click Choose. And we're up and running. So I'll just make this a bit bigger so everybody can see. No, I will say that Visual Basic in Excel 2016 and 2019 likes to pitch a fit if, any, if it doesn't get all of your attention, so I would recommend not trying to do anything else intensive on your computer while you're running the Magma Chamber Simulator. The MCS is fairly easy to navigate and everything is clearly labeled with steps plainly numbered. Step one is to choose which version of melts you want to use. Again, the MELTS website is located at melts.ofmresearch.org and if you click here on which version of MELTS you should use, it will bring up this handy flowchart that Mark Yorso has kindly provided that can help you to select the version of MELTS that's best for your composition. So to select the version of MELTS, we want to click the button for Step 1, MELTS Terminal Commands. We can choose which version to use in this drop-down menu. And for this composition, we want to use Rhyolite Melts version 1.2.0. Now the batch executable labels will automatically update upon your selection. You'll notice how there are three batch executable labels, one for each subsystem, the Magma, the Wall Rock, and the Recharge. Because we are doing an FC only run, we will only be dealing with the Magma subsystem. So we can click on this Put in Clipboard button for the Magma subsystem at the top. This will automatically copy this batch terminal text to the clipboard. Next, you'll want to click on the terminal window you have open and paste the batch terminal text into the terminal window. Again, here's a point where Excel 2016 and 2019 get hung up if things aren't done precisely their way. So you'll need to do the next few things exactly in the order I tell you to in order to avoid an Excel freeze. Click on the large Excel window on the file name title, or somewhere in that general area. Now we can click on the red X button to close out the belt batch terminal selection window. This will allow you to proceed without Excel freezing up. But if that happens, don't worry, it's fine and there is a workaround. Since the melt batch terminal text has already been pasted into the terminal window, we won't need to access it again. And you can restart Excel, reopen the Magma Chamber Simulator, and then just proceed immediately to step two, uploading an input file. So for step two, we want to click on this button to select an MES input file and create a new MCS output file. 
This will bring up a user form where you can enter in the name of the file that you want to associate this run with. In previous versions of MCS, we ran on Excel 2011, and one of the limitations of that version was that we could only have a file name with six characters. So we used to have boring naming schematics, like 31 January A. But now we're able to offer an expanded character limit, so file names can be up to 20 characters long. So we can instead name our MCS archive something like tutorial underscore FC vid. Now notice how I used an underscore instead of a space. You'll need to maintain a constant character string, so use an underscore where you would a space as is standard practice. The second half of step two is to select our MES input file that we have already created for this model. Now only those files that begin with MES underscore will be available for selection in this drop down menu. So if you don't see your file name, check to make sure that it does begin with MES underscore. If it doesn't come up, it's likely that you just need to rename it to begin with these four characters. We can select our MES input file, MES underscore FC underscore two, and click the finish button to create our MES archive file. Now what's really nice here is because this is an FC only run and there's no assimilation involved, we can actually bypass the wall rock solidus step. Uh, prior versions of MCS required us to do this every time, but now we can check this box up here. So if no assimilation is involved and you don't need any information about the wall rock subsystem, you can click this check box and kind of just get around that step. Now we can run the magma chamber simulator because we're bypassing that wall rock step and click step four. Although we didn't set a hard stop temperature in the MECS input file, uh, because there's no wall rock information being considered, uh, where, the hard, where the run would normally stop when the wall rock and magma system are thermally equilibrated, we don't have a wall rock system here to consider. So we're forced to give a hard stop temperature. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to cut this run off at about 900 degrees. So we're not really interested in things happening near the solidus in this case. And click OK. This should start our run. You'll see down here that some things are happening. Now it might take a while for it to get to this step. Uh, it might take a couple seconds before the magma chamber simulator starts really thinking. Uh, but once it does, you'll have our Harker diagrams show up. Uh, in previous versions of the magma chamber simulator, you had to update these manually, but now these update automatically. And we can watch our magma composition evolve in real time. All right, our run is now complete. You'll notice that the current temperature of the magma is 885.82, which is less than our hard stop temperature. So our run is going to terminate. We can click OK. It is reminding us to export our data. In order to do that, we click on the button for step five, export run results. Once you hit the button, just kind of let things alone. And our run results have now been saved as this new output file, tutorial underscore fcvid.xlsx. We click OK. And now we can go ahead and close out the magma chamber simulator. I like to quit Excel completely in between runs. And remember, don't save. You do not want to save over the magma chamber simulator and control C to go ahead and stop this batch terminal. Just, I just like to keep things clean. So that concludes our tutorial on how to actually perform a magma chamber simulator run. In our next tutorial, we'll be looking at how to do a trace elements run for a fractional crystallization only model.